Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the hypothetical situation of Titan, the moon of Saturn, being a planet. In other words, what if it actually were a planet? So let's discover some of the more unusual facts about this uh, very interesting moon, and let's pretend that this actually became a planet. Welcome to What The Math. And so for this simulation, what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that one day something happens to Titan and it actually gets kicked out of the system of Saturn. And in other words, it's actually going to become its own object orbiting just a little bit closer to the Sun, right between Jupiter and Saturn. So there is Titan, it's going to become its own object now. And by all of the modern classifications, it now is sort of technically is a planet. But the interesting thing about this particular object is that even without the or, uh, its own orbit, even, even without this individual sort of way of orbiting around the sun, it already looks, feels, and basically practically is a planet. Let's start with the size. This object is very big. It's actually bigger than Mercury. In terms of size, it's bigger than Mercury, it's uh, much bigger than our own moon, and it's almost the same size as Mars, just a little bit smaller. It's not as massive as Mercury because for the most part, inside Titan there is actually only silicates, basically rocks, and not, not so much iron. But nevertheless, in terms of size, it's pretty big. It's also, interestingly, uh, very atmospheric. As a matter of fact, it has about 1.6 times the atmosphere of Earth. It has very thick atmosphere, so thick that you cannot even see the surface here. So if I were to actually disable the atmosphere by clicking on the button right here, and so because of this thick atmosphere, we can't even see the surface without using fancy uh, radar uh, equipment that we used during the Huygens Cassini mission. Now, this object is actually also one of the most complex objects we were able to land on. So during the Cassini Huygens mission, the Huygens probe actually landed on Titan and took some amazing footage showing us what the surface here looks like. But when you look at how far away this is from Earth, there's Earth right there. This is where Saturn is. This is where we were able to land this. Um, except for this far away object, we we're only able to land on Mars and Venus, which are much, much closer to us. Uh, so in terms of the actual distances, this is a tremendously complex mission that we were able to execute, landing on the surface of uh, Titan, taking incredible photos and even recording the sound of the wind on Titan, which I actually talked about and demonstrated in one of the previous videos. And anyway, so what is really interesting about Titan is that just like Earth, it has a liquid cycle in it. Basically, there's rain, there's liquid oceans, there's um, rivers. Uh, as a matter of fact, one river is similar to River Nile, very, very long, very large. And uh, these rivers and these lakes are not water. They're formed by liquid um, methane and ethane. Basically, the stuff that we usually use on our planet Earth to create fuel for our cars. Interestingly, when it rains on Titan, the total cost of the rain is like trillions of dollars uh, more than, than the entire deposit of oil on our planet Earth. So the rains here are ridiculously expensive. But because there's almost no oxygen, it would be kind of useless for us. We would not be able to use combustion here very easily because there's very little oxygen. However, the atmosphere that uh, Titan does contain has quite a lot of nitrogen. 90% of this atmosphere is actually nitrogen, um, whereas 80% of our um, Earth atmosphere is nitrogen, meaning that the atmospheric composition here is very similar to that on Earth. So we're really just lacking oxygen. And if we ever come and decide to colonize this beautiful object, which we totally should consider, because this is probably the easiest object to colonize, what we would have to do is somehow find a way to release the oxygen. So maybe, just maybe, what we could do is just launch a few asteroids at this object and see what happens. So if we actually launch asteroids, they might uh, produce enough energy to release a tremendous amount of oxygen, giving us an opportunity to breathe on this, um, well, now you could call it a planet. And interestingly, 
if we were to actually come here, the only thing we would be missing other than oxygen is the temperature. It is actually very cold here. We're talking to like minus hundred de hundreds of degrees cold. Current temperature here, even after the collisions, is minus 170 degrees Celsius. It's a little bit too chilly. But, you know, if we could somehow protect ourselves from the chill and create oxygen, we'll be actually able to survive here quite easily. Except, of course, for the fact that there is also no magnetosphere. So nothing is protecting this object from the solar um, radiation, but because it's so far away from the sun, there isn't that much radiation to worry about compared to Earth. Now, for all we know, there actually might already be life here. For all we know, this object already has life because during the Cassini-Huygens mission, we've detected unusual signs of methane clouds that were still kind of unexplainable. We don't really know what caused those clouds, and we don't really know what may have uh, created them. On Earth, those clouds are usually created by life. So for all we know, there might be some bacterial life here that creates unusual, strange, and uh, mysterious clouds that we were able to detect. Now, it seems that I've actually increased the temperature to, oh wow, 300 degrees Celsius. So now this object is going to be melting a little bit, and you can see there's actually some water already that has created those clouds that you see in the atmosphere. That, of course, is not very realistic, but it's possible that uh, one day we'll be able to melt all of the water that is located here. Because this object um, basically has quite a lot of ices that are trapped on the surface, and a lot of this ice is water ice, and it may even have a liquid ocean underneath all of this ice. And on top of all of this, it also has these tremendously large cryovolcanoes that are basically like volcanoes on Earth, but instead of throwing out lava, they throw out uh, various types of ices, such as water, methane, ethane, and so on. So it's a very unusual, very interesting, and a very cool object, incomparable to anything you would ever see on Earth. And one thing that you may have not known about this uh, particular moon is that it practically is the Middle Earth from The Lord of the Rings. Basically, a lot of the objects here are named after the locations in J.R.R. Tolkien's um, Lord of the Rings trilogy, Hobbit, and Silmarillion. So many mountains here actually have names like the Misty Mountain, for example. On the other hand, um, some other sci-fi was used to name some of the other regions, so, so like you can actually even find objects named after various locations in the Dune by uh, Frank Herbert. So, all in all, this actually already has some really cool names that I personally would love to visit one day and possibly take a picture in front of those locations, because this object is actually my favorite in our solar system. If there's anywhere I would like to go one day, it would probably be Titan. Even if we never consider it to be a planet, and if, even if it remains the moon of Saturn. Now, one last thing I wanted to mention about Titan is that it has an unusual property that creates an environment where you could actually technically fly if you had tiny wings uh, attached to your arms. Because it has low gravity, as a matter of fact, the gravity here is only about 1.3 meters per second square, which is about seven times or six times smaller than the gravity on Earth. And because the density is so much higher than the density on Earth, um, it's about 1.6 times higher, uh, you could actually jump up and flap your arms with the tiny wings on, it, on them, and you could totally fly around here. This is a planet, where you, or a, I guess a moon, where you could easily fly around, fulfilling the ultimate dream of humanity to fly without support of any engine or device, which would probably be, probably be one of the coolest uh, things to experience before you die. So let's put it on our bucket list, and let's all go to Titan and fly around this unusual planet. Although technically it only classifies as a planet in my simulation, in real life, it still is known as the moon, unless we redefine the definition of planetary bodies. So, all in all, Titan is actually an incredible object. As a matter of fact, forget about Mars, forget about moon. We really should be focusing on how to colonize and how to settle on Titan, because this right here is definitely one of the best opportunities for us to create an incredible colony and to learn about our solar system as well. Now. 
I accidentally collided it with Pluto. And I did it too fast to see, so let's do it again. And let's explode uh, some of the other objects on this particular uh, planet slash moon. And let's actually go back to um, the Saturn system for a second. And let's see what would happen if we actually did collide Titan with something size of a small dwarf planet. Like, for example, let's collide it with Sedna and see what happens if Titan collided with Sedna. And so there is Sedna. This is how small it is in comparison to this very large moon. And there it is colliding with this beautiful object. Which would actually transform it and expose its surface as well. You can actually now see the surface of Titan showing through the thick atmosphere created by its haze. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to kind of do in this video. I wanted to hypothesize about Titan. I wanted to give you some facts you may have not known about it. And I wanted to pretend that this is actually a planet that one day we might be able to settle and to live on. This is definitely an object I would like to visit one day. And this is definitely an object I think we should colonize. What do you guys think? Do you think we'll be able to do it before the end of the century? Hopefully we can. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video and come back tomorrow to learn something else and potentially learn something that you've never known before. And don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and who wants to learn through video games and maybe even support this channel on Patreon. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.